All right, let's take a look at how to create a zipper brush in ZBrush and actually a curve insert mesh brush. So if I go here, I can see that this IMM zipper, I can see there's a couple of them. Um, there's some IMM army curve and different things like that. Um, and that's what I kind of want to show how to do. So not necessarily like modeling the complexity of the zipper, but more, more or less showing how to get this done and how to actually achieve this type of result. Um, now, if we break this down, what it is, it's basically a starting point, a middle point that's repeated indefinitely until the end, and then there's the ending point. So we could say that this is in three parts. Um, and if I look at the, the poly groups, so if I turn on poly F, I can see that this is one part, this is another color, and this is a different color down here. So how is that done? Well, I'm going to go ahead and just kind of create that in ZBrush real quick. So I'm going to switch to the simple brush here. Hit switch, hit control N to clear the canvas, and then I'll just reset this. Okay, great. Now I'm going to go to tool, and I'm going to go to cube. I'm going to drag this in the scene and click edit. Now I'm just going to go ahead and scale this. And this is going to be my zipper part, and I can see my character here. Okay, so I'm just going to kind of have this simple cube represent the zipper itself and now I'm going to go to sub tool I'm going to hit or oh, I first have to make poly mesh 3d that's important I have to basically kind of finalize this tool if you will now I'm going to go down to duplicate and I'm going to go ahead and move this down and this is going to start to be the zipper portion but instead of me making a long zipper I only have to make one kind of repeatable structure of it. So this is the part that repeats and I can imagine that repeating indefinitely. Okay, oh, well, until the end. And now maybe I'll take this one, I'll duplicate again and pull this down. And if you were more comfortable modeling this in Blender, Maya, Max, Cinema 4D, it doesn't really matter. You could, you could model it in your modeling preferred software um, and then import it into ZBrush and you might say well Dave how, how are you gonna know if it's the top middle or bottom and I'll show that but before I can you can see I have four different sub tools here I'm gonna click on append or I'm sorry I'm gonna click on merge merge visible since they're all visible I'm gonna hit merge visible and now it looks like nothing happened so now what I have to do is I have to go to append and then I can grab it Okay, so here it is. Here's the appended version. And if yours is missing the top, that just means that you forgot to hit Make Polymesh 3D on the first object. Okay. So, great. Now I've got this as one piece. And so let's say if I modeled this in Maya, and but I you know, made it more complex, if, however complex I want, I'm going to determine what's the first, middle, and end part by simply going to my poly groups. And now here's my poly groups. I'm gonna turn on poly F and I can see that they're all the same right now. I, I need to give these different colors. So to do that, I'm gonna go control shift, look at the visibility there and say group visible. Now control shift again. I'm gonna also grab this last one and say group visible. And I can see that there's now three different colors. Okay, and that's important. Now I didn't paint it, it's just considered a poly group. So it's basically embedded selection and that's important for this. Notice that I also have this facing forward, I can see there as opposed to facing the side and I need it facing the camera when I create my brush. So I'm gonna go up here and now I'm gonna say create insert mesh at the bottom here. And what you'll notice is it'll add a new brush right here. So it's going to ask me, hey, do I want to append it to an existing brush? And I can see that these with the numbers have multiple brushes kind of appended to them. Or I can create a new one. I'm just going to click on the new one. And now I can see right here, here's my brush. But right now, it's just a regular insert mesh brush. So if I want to make it kind of that zipper functionality, I'm going to open up my divider over here. And I'm going to bring in two things. I'm going to bring in the brush menu. I'm also going to bring in the stroke menu. Okay. And on the brush menu, if I look at uh, modifiers, 
really this try parts is the key thing that I need to turn on because I can see that this is in three parts and it knows the middle part's going to repeat. But notice that I cannot select it. The way that I'm able to select that is to go down to stroke, go to curve and say curve mode. Okay, now this is what I'm doing is for this particular brush here. And when I turn curve mode on, I can see that this lights up and I can see that yes, oh, awesome, it's tri parts. Okay, well now I think I'm ready to go ahead and give it a try. So I'm gonna go back here and I'm going to just switch this. I'm just gonna go to the simple brush, switch, control N, and then I'm gonna go here and go to back to my sphere, hit edit. And I'm not gonna be able to draw on this sphere until it's a poly mesh 3D. So I'm gonna go ahead and click make poly mesh 3D. Okay, great. Now, let me go ahead and try my brush. Here it is, I've got tri parts on, I've got curve mode, and now when I click and drag, there we go. That's the start point, that's the repeated point, and then that's the end point. I can also click on this and I can kind of move it around. Okay, or if I move this one, I can see I'm, I'm changing the kind of the placement of it. So um, if I wanted the zipper to be bigger, I could make the brush bigger, or if I wanted it to be smaller, I can make my brush even smaller. And you can see that. Now, let's say if this, you can see that all of these pieces are independent of one another. Okay, maybe I want that for a zipper, but let's say if it was a belt, okay, it would be really easy to kind of model, you know, we'll say the belt buckle, and then I want this to be kind of the repeating part, and then I want the end buckle over here. And I want that to be physically connected. Well, then what I would do is just make sure that I choose weld points on the modifier and then it's going to be a kind of a physically connected piece. And if you want an example of what um, can be done here, I would suggest to go to like um, these other ones and you can see like army curve. Uh, this bike chain uh, is really cool and that's not even a tri part, it's just basically that linked as a curve. But I think kind of play around with these, um, you know, these different things in here and it'll kind of give you, um, here's IMM curve, it'll give you an idea of what's possible and um, some really, really cool things here. And then you can, if you select some of this stuff, then you can see over here, there's tripart selected, is curve mode selected, you know, how are they doing that? And um, hopefully that was helpful. Make sure to leave any questions below and also subscribe if you want to see new videos posted every week. Thank you.